Hi, this is Jeremy Franklin, instructor for BIM 101 at the International Academy of Design and Technology. I'm going to go over how to draw a basic floor plan in AutoCAD. I'm going to use this example floor plan you can see here. The uh, principles of drawing any plan are going to be basically similar to what I'm going to go through, although your plan may be slightly different. Obviously, your dimensions could be a little different, or the plan could be entirely different, but the ideas of how to use the commands and tools in AutoCAD to draw the plan are going to really be basically about the same. Generally speaking, it's going to be easiest if you're given a plan like this to draw to start with the outer perimeter and then kind of work your way to the inside and to the details. So you'll notice that my dimensions here for the outside of this plan are 20 feet by 18 feet. So I'm going to use that as a starting point and draw a simple box and then work toward the interior of the plan from that. Now before you start drawing anything in AutoCAD, you want to make sure that your units are set correctly so that as you input feet and inches, AutoCAD understands the dimensions that you're giving it. If you have any doubts or if you need to check the units, uh, it's easy to do uh, by simply typing units at the command prompt. U-N-I-T-S and then space or enter. You can see how my units are set to architectural for the length type. That's what we want if we're going to be inputting feet and inches in architectural format. The default, uh, depending on which type of template it was used, is often decimal, which means AutoCAD wouldn't understand the units as we would normally or naturally want to input them in the architectural field. So I'm going to just hit OK. If, if you've changed the units, obviously you'd want to hit OK to save your change. Uh, otherwise, you could cancel if you didn't. The other thing to make your uh, form, your interface a little easier is at the bottom where you have your row of ortho, polar, grid, etc. Uh, I would normally suggest you turn off um, snap for sure. Um, potentially grid, uh, that's more subjective. Um, some students get confused by seeing the grid on screen thinking that those grid boxes are set to a certain size when you may not be, um, they may not be set to a size that you think they are. So you don't use that as an indicator of what size something is. Basically, you could really just ignore it if it was turned on, or you could just turn it off. So I'm gonna start with that box, which is 18 by 20. I could draw that as a rectangle, or I could draw four lines. Uh, either one, again, there's a lot of ways to solve various drafting problems in AutoCAD, not always a right way and a wrong way, because there's sometimes 10 ways that all would get you the same accurate solution. In this case, I'm going to draw as four lines rather than a rectangle. The reason being is later on I'm going to use those lines to offset a copy, and that process is a little easier if they're separate pieces. So I'm going to start my line command, and I'm actually going to start my floor plan at the zero, zero point in my drawing coordinate system. So for that first point, I'm going to type zero, comma, zero, and enter in order to start my first corner of the plan right at the zero, zero point in space. Now, normally you could either click your second point, but that wouldn't be accurate as far as where you're drawing the line from and to and the resulting length of that. So your other option is to guide the mouse in a specific direction and type in a distance. And that typing process is why we had to check our units. Now, you'll notice I'm kind of zooming and panning while I'm in the line command, and that's because I was zoomed out fairly far, so my line was looking very, very short. And in order to show it a little easier, I zoomed in with my mouse wheel, uh, scrolling that, uh, allow me to zoom in, in order to make the line look a little larger. In reality, you're just zooming in like a digital camera in order to bring that line closer to you in terms of your view of it. And then again, holding the middle scroll wheel allows you to slide your position back and forth relative to the line. So that's panning. So I started my line. And then I'm guiding the mouse toward the right because I like to draw it counterclockwise. If you want to go clockwise, again, that's totally fine. As long as you go in a straight direction with polar, meaning you see that dotted extension line extend out from your first point. And now I will type the 18 feet and enter in order to draw my line that's 18 feet long. So when you hit enter after the 18 feet, you should see that the line is drawn. And now my cursor has um, a hold of the end point of the line instead of the start point of the line, and that's how I know the line was accurately drawn.
In other words, if I still had a hold of the first point of the line, that means that the line's not really drawn at all, and that would be a red flag to look at the command prompt and see if it's giving you an error message of some type. So the fact that it moved to the second point of the line means that the line is drawn, it's there, and I can continue on with the rest of the lines. Now, a common question at this point is, why does the line go out of the screen? It looks way too long. Because you might see something like this, where the line looks enormous because it's going all the way across my drawing area. And all that means, remember, is that you just zoomed in too close. So you don't have to panic. Um, the line is always the right size, assuming you're following the right process of my steps. So don't think that the line is too big or too small. It's just a matter of your position relative to the line or how far you're zoomed in or out. So you can then scroll your scroll wheel out in order to get your whole line on screen. Now, another common problem when you try to scroll your scroll wheel out is that it kind of seems to get stuck. In other words, it won't zoom out as far as you wish it would so that you still can't see the whole line on screen. That's still a very common problem. And if you look at the very bottom left corner when that happens, a lot of times it'll say something like, I already zoomed out as far as possible. And basically, that's because AutoCAD only remembers so much at a given time of as far as what's in your drawing space. And it kind of tends to forget about the remainder so that it can run fast. It only has so much memory, so to speak. So sometimes you have to tell it to basically refresh or reload its memory in order for it to allow you to zoom out or zoom in farther. So if your mouse wheel starts to kind of get stuck when you're zooming and it's not doing what you want, there's a couple solutions. Both of those solutions, um, it's probably going to be easiest if you exit the line command. So I'm going to hit escape for a minute. Theoretically, if my zoom was stuck, this is what you would do. You hit escape to exit the line command. And then we would do what's called a zoom extents. That's one easy option to get that whole line in your drawing screen, no matter what your zoom problem is. It's going to always solve that. So I hit escape to exit line. Now I'm going to do Z for zoom, Z and space. Again, space and enter are the same thing. So Z enter or Z space. Now you've started the zoom command. So read your command line, the bottom row. You see all of your options there in square brackets, all center, dynamic, extents, previous, etc. Whenever you have options, the capital letter of the option, or capital letters plural in some cases, is going to be your shortcut that you can type in order to access that option. So I hit Z space, and now I want extents. So I'm going to do E space, and it will instantly zoom to show the largest objects in your drawing window. That could be a mile long building, or it could be something the size of a, a penny. It will zoom to show that object as large as it can in the window that you're working in. So if your line is not fitting, it will instantly fit. Now you can also use your scroll wheel a little bit more, and you can see that it's not stuck anymore because that kind of frees that up in the process by kind of doing what's called a regen or a regenerate. So your other option, if you didn't want to zoom extents, was just to force a regenerate or a regen. It's kind of like reloading a website in a way. It's going to force AutoCAD to kind of refresh its memory in the sense of what's on screen. So if you wanted to do that, you just type RE. So I didn't really need to do that because I already did zoom extents. But my point is you can do either one of those when your mouse wheel gets stuck, and that will usually get you out of the problem. RE or Z space E space in order to do a zoom extents. All right, so now, back to drawing lines. Now, if you didn't have any zoom problems, then your line command would have stayed active, and you could have just continued your other three lines around the drawing, or around the perimeter of the building. In my case, I exited, so I'm going to start another line command with L space. Now, I want to start this next line at the end point of the previous line. So it's very important that I'm accurate with that. So I want to have my O snap button turned on, object snap, so that when I click here, you can see I'm getting the end point of this previous line by the little yellow square and the word end point. Your square might be a different color. So I clicked then, and now I have perfectly grabbed the end point of that line. I can guide my mouse in an upwardly direction, and I'm going to type 20 feet. Again, that comes from that PDF plan that I originally showed you, 20 feet and enter. Again, it's gone out of the drawing window, but it's going to be a little bit easier to maneuver your way around now that you have your zoom set somewhat close to where it needs to be. All right, so now I'm going to continue my other three lines around. So I'm going to guide my mouse to the left, 
18 feet enter and then I can either guide my mouse down and type the 20 or I can just click the first endpoint and that will accomplish the same thing either way same result now I'm done with lines for right now so I'm gonna hit escape and now I've exited the line command so that's the basic outside perimeter of my plan so let's look at back at the plan again so I have a box that's 20 by 18 usually the next best step is to give your walls thickness now as you get more into building information modeling and learning other software you're gonna be able to draw with walls that come with thickness that are actual intelligent wall objects but for right now we're just drawing 2d lines to represent walls so I need to have another set of lines for the interior face of the walls so an easy way to do that and be very precise about it is the offset command so I'm going to use offset and use the specifically specifically designated thickness of the walls in the directions of my assignment which is four inches so O for offset and notice the command line it's not ready for me to select an object yet it says specify offset distance so I'm going to type four inches you don't have to put inches assuming your units are set to the normal architectural units inches is the default so I could just type four and that would be fine and then space or enter now the command line says select object to offset so which line well I need to do all four of these but it doesn't really matter which one I do first so I'm just gonna pick the top one and now it says at the command prompt specify point on side to offset so do I want that line to go up or down well if you look at the PDF the dimension of 20 feet and 18 feet goes to the outside of the plan so if I were to offset that line up I have just exceeded the 20 feet because you know the 20 feet is what I originally drew so I want to make sure that I'm offsetting toward the interior of the plan so I'm gonna click below that line so now the thickness is going to the proper side compared to the dimension on the plan that I was given so I'm gonna stay in the offset command because you'll notice it still says select object to offset so I can continue select line click toward the interior and I can do that for all four of these lines so now my walls have thickness that's perfectly precise and I know it's four inches because that's what I have my offset set to now if you zoom in on the corner a little notice that uh, it doesn't look the way it does on the plan because here it's a nice clean corner like a wall that turns and here I have these two lines crossing so I need to clean up my corners I'm gonna use the fillet command for that it's a very easy option again you have many choices you can use trim I could pull the grips down like this as long as I have my O snaps on that would be precise um, to the intersection so that would be another option um, but fillet is very fast so I'm gonna show you uh, fillet so F I'm not in any commands so F space notice the radius in the command prompt says zero that's good because I want a nice sharp corner fillet command is also great at rounded corners but I don't want to do rounded right now so the radius needs to be zero so assuming that's zero all you need to do is select the two lines click one and click the other and now I have nice clean corner so let's say my radius wasn't zero so then you start your command F space and then you can see radius is zero but hypothetically what if it wasn't uh, I could type R for radius because you can see that as my option at the bottom in the square brackets so R space and now I could type in zero if I wanted it to be zero or if I wanted it to be a rounded corner I would type something else so I'm just gonna hit zero and enter and now I would be ready to select my two lines again so click and click notice when I selected those two lines I clicked on the portions I wanted to keep or not delete if I selected the tips that extended out I would lose the wrong part of the line so that's an important distinction now I need to do fill it on these other three corners if you want to repeat the last command you just did because fill it is a command that will exit when it's finished automatically not all commands will do that so I want to repeat the command again I could hit F and space or if you just hit space enter or probably right click it's going to repeat the same command you just did I say probably because it depends on whether your cat is set up the same way as mine um, right click will often repeat your last used command as well so now I have those four corners looking nice and clean